Hey everybody, and welcome to something I didn't intend to do this week, but I'm going to go ahead and give this review thing. So this is going to be a break in the 31 for 31. Um, not in that, uh, you know, I'm not doing it for tonight because I still have my movies on the docket and still will have a review of something later on. Uh, but because uh, I got a very good opportunity, thanks to Blumhouse and thanks to the Fright Club uh, podcast, to see a VIP screening of one of the Welcome to Blumhouse films. Now, if you don't know what these are, there are a series of four films. Two films were released last uh, on the 6th, and then two films are being released on the 13th. And I was able to see one of them, which was called Evil Eye. Now, it's interesting to say about this film. The, the first thing, and I'm not really going to try to give as much away, uh, other than I'm going to try to point out just some things that I might have had problems with, uh, and what I actually liked about the film, but I really don't want to go super spoily, though it's not a very hard movie not to spoil, because everything kind of happens the way that you're intending it to happen, uh, rather than it be something completely different. So, what is this film? Uh, the film is basically... And, and I do really did really enjoy that it was uh, basically kind of an Indian thriller, right? Uh, it started an all Indian cast, and it had some relatively kind of like suspenseful moments, but those were kind of few and far between. To call it a thriller or to call it a horror movie uh, is not necessarily the right thing. It kind of isn't. It really isn't. It's you can kind of say it's in the thriller category somewhat, but I don't know if I'd put it there. It's really just a drama. Like, it's weird that it's included within this set of films because I don't find this to be even remotely a horror movie. Like, I feel that nomenclature for this film is wrong. You know, it it has a lot of really good themes. You know, the, the big overarching theme is that, you know, mothers are going to teach daughters to get away from the mistakes that they made when they were in their youth, right? And so you have the story of this mother and this daughter uh, that uh, I, I have a hard time saying the names and like, I'm so I'm, I'm gonna totally avoid them. It's just gonna be mom and daughter. And the mom wants the daughter to get married. The, the daughter is currently living in New Orleans and the mom is back in New Delhi, right? And so she's basically working uh, we're trying to get the daughter to get a boyfriend, right? It's kind of like the stereotypical Indian mother thing to do, uh, but that's kind of what's going on in the film. And she sets her up with a guy. She doesn't actually uh, end up going out with the guy because the guy is over an hour late. And then she ends up meeting another guy there, and then the drama kind of ensues from there. There's something odd about the guy that the mom doesn't really know, and she's not sure whether or not she, he, the, like, the guy is good enough for her daughter. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on. But everything is extremely straightforward. Like, there, there's nothing there that I, I feel like lends itself to being either or that thriller or that drama. Really into the last couple of minutes of the film. I, not drama, horror. It's definitely a drama piece. Because it's just a lot about, and it's weird because the way that it's shot, and I don't know when it was exactly shot or how it was shot, it's basically shot mostly like on the phone. Like the daughter does something and then it's the mom and the daughter talking. And then the mom does something or the dad goes out somewhere and goes back to the mom. And then it's the mother and daughter talking on the phone again because they're in two different places. That's fine, but I just feel like it drags a lot. Like it doesn't lend itself to being a horror movie. And it doesn't really lend itself to being a thriller at all. And I even see on IMDb that it's classified as a mystery, but I don't know what the fucking mystery is. Like, I really want to know what is the mystery. What did you decide was the mystery of the film? Now, that's not to say it's a bad film, because I actually pretty, I enjoyed it pretty much. Like, I, I mean, uh, I'll give a rating at the end of this thing, but I, I thought that it could have helped itself by just being a little quicker or throwing in those little like nuggets to keep it going like those little pieces that that'd be like hey uh here's just a little thing that can lead you down this path here's this little piece of cheese 
right? And I'm gonna give you this little piece of cheese, but I'm gonna put it down over here and you have to go over there and find it. And so you wanna go find it because you're, you know there's a piece of cheese at the end of the goddamn hallway. But here, there is really none of that. Everything that kind of happens, happens in way, the way that it kind of should happen in terms of the story. Uh, it's hard to say what exactly I mean in that case, but it's like, hey, we're going to tell you about this. We're going to tell you about that piece of cheese, okay? But instead of it being a windy road to get that piece of cheese, it's going to be straight. And it's not really going to be a piece of cheese. It's just going to be the next point in the film. Like, I wish there was more mystery to what was actually going on. Like, the mystery of the guy, you know, where did he come from? How did he know to be there? Like, they, they do that a little bit, but it's like, I get it. I know who he is. I know exactly where this is going with the film. It, it doesn't lend itself to maybe you thinking differently because you never are allowed to think differently. You are allowed to think in one way only. Like, that's it. You can only go down this path. Is the mother crazy? Well, this is what the path's going to say. And if the mother is crazy in this path, that's the way it's going to be. If the mother's not crazy in this path, that's the way it's going to be. I feel like it tries to throw you in for a twist, but there are no twists. There isn't anything that would make it a good mystery. And that's where I am I feel like the film falls short. If it's just a drama about the mother protecting the daughter from creating the same mistakes she, did, she made when she was young and staying in a relationship for too long, that's great. Just focus on that. Just do that. No problem. But I feel like they want to do this supernatural thing, but it's not really supernatural because it's part of the culture, right? It's not something that is is different or uh, it's different to maybe me because I don't know anything about the culture. Like, not, not I don't know anything about the culture. I don't practice anything in that culture. Right? I have whatever I have here in my own beliefs and my thoughts and all that stuff, but I know what that is to somebody that maybe practices it. You know, Get some more stuff in there that you may think about the culture that's interesting that we don't know. Like one of the big reasons I like watching Japanese cinema, right? And especially Japanese horror is because their versions of ghosts are completely different than what the American version of a ghost is. You know, a lot of the times when I think of ghosts, I think of, you know, Casper the fuckhead ghost, where he's there, he's friendly, and he goes to, you know, he just, boo, scary, or like the old Mickey Mouse cartoons, or, you know, something that just like, or like the haunting style ghosts. That's what I think. I don't think of them as vengeful spirits that have a purpose to why they're a fucking ghost. And... Or, or, you know, many of the other little things that are kind of nuanced in different cultures. I have my own thoughts. And here, I would have loved to have seen it in a way that it challenged what my thought of this was. But I don't feel like it was challenged at all. It was just laid on the table. This is what it is. This is what happened. And that was the problem. Now, again, I'm kind of talking negatively about this. Because I say the performances were very, very good. Not so much by the mom uh, towards the end of the movie. She was a little stiff at that part where I don't think that she needed to be stiff it was very odd uh, but overall I think that all the performances were pretty good now what I also did like about the, the film was kind of the pacing like it turned out to be a lot quicker than I thought it was though the middle kind of drags just a little bit but the beginning gets you really into it and I think when we finally get to the third act everything runs pretty well and you get very interested in what's going on uh, again, the middle, I think that they could have shortened it a little bit, or we could have gone a little more into the culture of things rather than just about, you know, just just kind of like, just, there, there isn't, okay, it, like, the culture of things, I don't even know you can say where it went, other than that the, 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 you know, there is the kind of rift between the mother and the daughter because she's getting more into this relationship at that point. And then the third act just kind of goes in the direction that I expected it to. I hate that I'm not spoiling this, by the way. If, if I could say a lot of things, I'd say a lot of things, but I'm not going to, I'm trying not to do it. But ultimately, I think your enjoyment of this film is going to depend on whether or not uh, you can get into the characters, 
whether or not you can get into the story and whether or not you can believe the last act of the movie. Um, if you've got all three of those together, you'll enjoy the film. Uh, I kind of enjoyed a, a, maybe a third of what was there. Like, I really wanted it to be more. I was kind of expecting this to be a little more. If it's not going to be a straight up horror movie, that it was at least going to be a thriller and there was going to be something that happened. And what actually went down, I wish it happened as the transition from the second act to the third act. And then the third act moved on a little more rather than it just kind of being what it is towards the end. And even the ending is not really satisfying. Like I keep talking myself out of this movie. Like I really wanted to like this movie. I did. And so ultimately I think for me, the score is going to be, uh, you know, two out of five Sapphire earrings. It's just, I was thinking originally it was going to be a three, but the more I've talked it out, the more I've thought about it, it's really a two. Like, I, I, you know, if I were to rate it on something else, like, say, IMDb and write a review, I think initially, after I saw the movie, I think I would put it at a six out of ten, and I think that I'd probably move it down to more like a five or even a four and a half out of ten. Um, I think that it just, it just misses the mark. It, it really had potential. I think that there could have been a lot more cultural stuff that could have been added to it. I know a lot of people are probably, why do you need more cultural stuff? Because I really feel like they could have added that, you know, a lot more to the whole, you know, arranged marriage. Because, like, that's what they tried to do in the beginning of it. She's trying to arrange the dates. And it's, like, kind of arranging marriage. But she doesn't necessarily do that because, you know, they lived in America for so long. Like, if there could have been more around that, there could have been more around reincarnation. If there could have been more around the relationship that she had and maybe the struggles that she's going through instead she's just kind of having headaches you know whenever she has these these random flashbacks that she has so I, again i wish that it would have been a better film than it was still not a bad film if you are interested in seeing it i'd say give it a shot because maybe i'm not giving it the service that it, it needs uh maybe i'm just falling a little short on it uh, and I don't understand something that maybe I should have picked up on. I don't know. But I think that if you were interested in seeing you see it. So again, I want to thank Blumhouse. And I want to thank um, the Fright Club podcast for allowing me to be able to see this a day early. It is releasing on the 13th. Um, I'm going to check out some of the other ones because I kind of the one that looks interesting, I think that is available right now already is that black box one. I think that one looks really interesting. And Nocturne looks pretty interesting too. Um, but uh, as for Evil Eye, I mean, if you really want to see it, watch it. If not, maybe this is the one that you skip out of all of them. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this regular horror or movie review. Uh, I can't really say horror review. And uh, don't forget to keep watching the 31 and 31 that are going on right now. There is a playlist uh, on the channel so that you can watch it. Or if you're on U or IGTV, there is a series and you can watch all of them in the series. And then don't forget, we're still doing our Rob Zombie Ween uh, podcast episodes. So we've already done The Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Three from Hell is going to come up this weekend. So make sure that you digest the last one that end was three minutes shorter than uh, the last podcast. But uh, I had a lot of fun with Dave recording these episodes. And then we're going to have one uh, special episode on Halloween Day that will release. Hopefully, I'll try to get it as early as we can uh, on a movie that everybody knows and might be just a little bit of a different type of podcast. But we'll see. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, don't forget, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. And let me know your thoughts if you've seen this movie uh, in the comments below. And thank you guys. And I will see you soon.